Hello, this is Kiwana Talk. My name's Ray Skabori. I'll be the host for this evening's program. Kiwana Talk is a public information program. Uh, we're bringing it to you now because of COVID from Gary Gardner's office on Ford Road. Uh, uh, there's, there's problems with doing it in the school and there's problems with doing it in uh, uh, the city uh, facilities. So uh, Gary kindly uh, is loaning us his office to do the show this week. Uh, uh, today we're very pleased to have with us uh, uh, Renan Ludger and Renan, uh, Renan, I'm saying it's Renan, uh, Renan is the president of the Dearborn Kiwanis Club. Uh, several of us are members, all our hosts are members and uh, uh, our, uh, some of our guests are members, but Renan is uh, coping with some of the problems with COVID. But Renan, first I'd like you to give us a little talk about your background, where you were born, where you grew up and uh, Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Ray. First, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm very excited to be on the show and, and uh, happy to be, be part of the Kiwana Talk. So, um, yep. Yeah, like, as you mentioned, I am the current president of the Dearborn Kiwanis Club uh, for the 2019 and, and uh, 2020 fiscal year. And it's been it's been a tough year. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you that much. And, uh, and we'll go a little bit more into it. I want to mention a few things that have been quite important that they've been changing this year with the club but uh, you asked about my background and I wanted to to, to go over that a little bit because it's quite a long story so there's a lot that that goes into to got me where I am today so um, you may not be able to tell from from my voice I'm actually not uh, a native born Michigander I was born and raised in uh, Sao Paulo Brazil and uh, actually moved here to America when I was 10 years old my, uh, my dad at the time was fortunate enough to get hired by Ford Motor Company and brought um, his family up, which was me and my two brothers and both my parents, and we've been here ever since. And um, at that time, it's always a, a great story to tell because I, uh, I remember the day when my parents, you know, sat all of us down and said, we're going, we're going to move to the United States. <laughs> and, you know, I, we weren't born with, with a lot of, of means or anything like that. So for us, it was this big, giant thing. It was like going to Disney World forever, yeah. right? Sounds An amazing. An adventure for a <laughs> child. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, I didn't realize at the time, but I, you know, it's a completely different country, completely different language, and I, we didn't speak a word of English. And um, my, my father moved up first for a couple of months to get situated with the job, place to live, et cetera, get everything set up for the family. And, um, and we moved up later. So it was, um, I remember it was a very traumatic trip in my life was flying at the airport with just my mom and my two younger brothers that, you know, uh, uh, mom traveling with her kids, you know, one ten, uh, one, my brother was eight and the youngest was yeah. four at the time. So yeah, she still has nightmares about that day, I'm sure, but. Uh, so you got up here and yeah. they said, well, it's time for you to go to school. That, that's right. So we, we didn't speak a word of English and we had come up right in between, um, I, it, if I remember correctly, it was right over the, um, the, the Christmas holiday. Yeah. And, uh, and we had come in and it was right the beginning of the second half of the school year. So they said, oh, perfect. This is a great opportunity. We're just, um, we're going to take care of two birds with one stone. So they, they dropped us off at, at elementary school and middle school, and, uh, and, and, and that was that. So and, and now, where did you actually go to school? What, what school? Yeah, did, I, I, um, the first school I, I joined here was Henry Ford Elementary School okay. in Dearborn. Okay. It was right next to where we used to live. So, and, uh, well, and you know, you, you're supposed to learn English, not Arabic. That's right. That's <laughs> right. But th in a way, that, that kind of helped, because I, I didn't speak a single word, right? So I, I, I show up to the school. The classroom, all the words everywhere, everything is, is Greek to me. It does, I don't understand it. And, um, and it took, took like three to six months to actually pick up enough of the language where I could carry a conversation with teachers, with, with, uh, with my classmates. And, uh, and it, was the, it was actually the, the bilingual classes for the Arabic students that really helped me very much to, to pick up the language as quickly as I did. Yeah. Because... It means uh, because I would attend, a lot of the bilingual uh, students would go to a specific class where they would, they would teach. I mean, it was a little bit of Arabic as well, but mostly English. They would introduce 
verbiage, syntax, you know, the, everything that we needed to know. And um, I was able to learn a lot of English and, and a bit of Arabic too at the time. Okay, now I'm going to cut in here because it's, it's really interesting. You, we got that point across, but you went on uh, to school, and I guess in school you got uh, a, a lot of experience with computers. Uh, yes, so it wasn't just school, it was, I mean, growing up nowadays, you, you can't really be away from computers, yeah. right? It's just a part of natural everyday life, more so now than ever before. And, um, and, and growing up, you know, we had a, a family computer that I would fight my brothers to, to play on, and, um, and I was able to, to become used to the, the online and, and network environment very early. Um, I was able to... Um, you know, access internet and, and learn things that um, that I still carry with me to this day, and in, in IT and in all sorts of yeah. um, information technology world. So it's it was great. What well, now? Tell us a little bit about how COVID has affected our Kiwanis Club and how we have conducted our meetings yeah. since COVID started. Yeah. So um, as a, so as a club, I've been I've been part of the club six years now, it, and I I was lucky enough to be elected president. Um, during this year, and it's been it's been a good ride, and um, and this just happened to be the year where we've had the first pandemic of the century, and it's been so bad that we've had to to close our, our physical offices, and and uh, we've lost our regular meeting place. So unfortunately, without that venue, we've had to switch to other means. So what our club has done, and what a lot of other clubs have done too, is switch to an online telepresence format where it's like. Uh, Zoom or Skype or uh, Google Teams, there's a lot of different programs that are being made available to the general public to be able to meet and connect and, and still have that social interaction. So we have moved, uh, the Kiwanis Club of Dearborn has moved for the past six months now to an entirely online platform and we've been meeting on Zoom uh, every week. Yeah, last night um, I, uh, I was at the meeting, uh, yep. and uh, we our meetings are Wednesday night. At the same time, we would have normally held our meetings would be in the evening, uh, That's right. about six fifteen, and uh, uh, I think we had fifteen, maybe a few more that came in and out. <laughs> you know, sure. There's sure. always people that show up and then sort of disappear occasionally. But <laughs> yep, we've we've had several guests come out of the show. The 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 call as, as we call it it's a phone call ultimately where everybody joins in is open and available we don't keep it a secret you know we have the information out there if anybody would like to join and be part of the meeting with us we do very much encourage that and we've had quite a few guests come on we've had a few speakers from different organizations and uh, it looks like for the foreseeable future that's how it's going to be now we had one young lady, I think, did we not donate to the group that she's involved in and that she decided to join our club? Is that That's correct? right, we had uh, somebody from the Children's Hospital. Yeah. And, um, and you know, it's, it's interesting to see, we, we, everybody is, was so scared that losing the ability to meet in person and moving to an online format would be a big burden to the club. And it's just been, it's been nice that we've been able to switch to an online format so well it's seamless. We haven't missed a single meeting. You know, we haven't had to cancel any meetings. We're still able to keep everybody connected, and uh, and we haven't really lost that much uh, momentum as a club. Yeah, it seems to me that if there was a way to do it, if we if we get a chance to meet in person down the road, it would be nice if we could have at least part of the meeting stay in an online format for people that for whatever reason can't make it but might show up at the you know. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. One, a, a great example of that is one of the members we have moved down to Florida. Yeah. And it was, it was a shame. It was a great friend of mine, and he's, you know, part of the club for, with me for the first four and a half years that uh, he was in Michigan. And after he moved down, unfortunately, we lost touch. And now that we switched to an online format, anybody he, from anywhere in the world can join. He does not miss a meeting. Not at all. He, he enjoys the meetings for the club. That's right. And he's, he's also a techie, so he, he has all kinds of elaborate backgrounds and that sort of thing. That, that's right. Yeah, we've, we've seen a lot of improvements to the format, too, with so many people out there having to, to use it. You've, you've seen a lot of evolving happening with those. So you've got all sorts of cool, fancy things you can do to, to change your your background, your style, your sound, and you can really personalize it and make it your own. Well, Renan, we, we, we had a, 
uh, a little project this summer uh, that we that we started when the, uh, things opened up, uh, and maybe we could talk about that a little bit. And yeah, uh, I kind of was behind it, and I yep, yep. and it's been a lot of fun. And what it is, we um, uh, we decided we'd get some some hand sanitizers in like lar larger containers, yep. and that's an example there. Yep. So. Thank you, first of all, uh, and it, well, it's a, been a great initiative to the club. Uh, a lot of what's been happening has, has impeded some of our ability to do a lot of fundraising as a club. So um, coming up with new and innovative ideas is really what is keeping us going, which is awesome. So a great example is the, is the hand sanitizer where everything is super clean now. Um, and we have the ability to, to help a lot of the local businesses and, and communities with um, just something as simple as a bottle of hand sanitizer they can keep on the counter and has the Kiwanis name on it. A lot of the local businesses, um, we actually have a list that, um, for example, businesses, uh, you know, Dearborn local, uh, like Bangkok 96, Lapita, Red Olive, Leon's, um, uh, several doctor's offices like Paul Gerke's office. Um, we have farm markets like Monroe, uh, Dearborn Farm Market, Monroe Bakery. So it's been, it's been quite interesting to be able to connect with that community in a way that we haven't before yeah. and, and put, our, put our name out there and, and be um, you know, part of this together. A, a, a humorous thing about this one, I had to borrow it back for the show. I have to re-deliver <laughs> it tomorrow. <laughs> Who did you borrow but, this one from? Well, it's the holiday. I go there okay. almost every day, so it was easy. You know, I said, it'll be back. Yeah, it'll I'm, be back tomorrow. And, that, and I'm sure they use it. <laughs> yeah, oh, they use it. They're one of the fast users. They use, yeah. they use it very how much? Easy. How many, uh, I guess, gallons would you say of hand well, sanitizer? Well, I, I, I know what, what it was actually uh, almost 21 gallons of hand wow. sanitizer. Yeah. Uh, but we always put it in the quart container. And this is a handy container. I mean, you know, it's... It's got to get yep, going we're using there, but you know, yep. we, can, we can do our hand sanitizing right here on the show. That's right, before <laughs> and after, absolutely. And uh, yeah. you, I think you were mentioning we have like 30-some businesses yeah, now have, that are We part? have it in 34 locations, but what we've done, uh, hand sanitizer is easier to locate now. It's, it's available in lots of stores now. When we first opened up, it was not, you had a hard time finding hand sanitizer back at, oh, yeah. uh, at the end of uh, June. Yeah, you had a hard so time finding anything. So uh, this was an order of 60 containers like this. Wow, okay. And then yeah. when, when it became available, uh, I was able to buy larger containers and keep these filled until this is my last report here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did a lot of running around town, but it was fun. It really was. It really was fun. No, and it's it's know. a great initiative, and it's been um, it's been working well so far. And you know, if, hopefully things get better. But yeah. if they don't, we have we have some way we can help and give well, back. This the way. thing about this was, you know, you're home and you're retired, and what I thought is, I'd like to do something. That was the way I felt about this, and. Uh, uh, and I, I think people appreciated the, the attempt to do something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and some places they really appreciate it. They say, oh, thank you. <laughs> you know? And it's, it's usually the people that work in the restaurants and stuff because it's yeah. there and they use it. They yeah. use it. They have to, all right? The time, yeah. You know? yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. part of our everyday lives now. It's well, we. Uh, 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 We've had our things at the club have changed as far as how we conduct the meetings and so on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, but uh, we, we have a fundraiser coming up. And we're going to talk about it after our break. I, I think we're, we're going to take a break now, a uh, short break, uh, for some, uh, a little advertisement about Kiwanis. And uh, join us after the break, and we'll talk about our fundraiser this year. Who is a kid? Well, that's a kid. And another. Look, a gaggle of them. Or is it a herd? Litter? Pride. But what about her? Tell her she's not a kid. Or him. So how do we tell who is a kid? Height? Age, maybe. 
but some of us have to grow up faster than others. A kid, a kid, a kid wants to make the world better. And one day, he just might. Is a kid fearless, vulnerable, strong, nervous? Yes, 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 yes. Kiwanis is 600,000 kids at heart doing all the little and big things it takes to help children around the world. Because kids need Kiwanis, all of them. Hello, we're back here on Kiwana Talk. I'm Ray Skabori, your host this evening, and we're here with Renan Ledger, the president of the Dearborn Kiwanis Club. And uh, Renan, we had, uh, it was interesting talking in the first half, but in this half we decided we'd like to talk a little bit about a merger we had last year with the Dearborn Heights Club. Uh, can you give us a little background on the evolution of that? Yeah, absolutely. We as, as a club, the Dearborn Kiwanis Club has stayed strong for over 90 years at this point. So it's a, it's a very long-standing club, one of the first, actually. And um, the Dearborn Heights Club reached out to us as they were, had a, a few less members than they, they ideally would like to have and uh, found that it would be a good uh, opportunity for them to come over and bring a lot of their members to the Dearborn Kiwanis Club and join the, the Kiwanis Club of Dearborn serving Dearborn, Dearborn Heights in the greater community and, uh, and pool our resources together and our efforts to uh, make sure that the both of clubs survive um, together instead of okay. separate. Well, many of us uh, knew a lot of the members of the Dearborn Heights Club uh, because we meet them on what we call interclubs. They would, we would go to their meetings occasionally, they'd come to ours. So over a period of time, you get to know quite a few of the people, at least the long-standing members. You get to you get to know most of them. So That's now right. it's been nice. Uh, we did have oh about a year where we had we were meeting live, you know, and having dinner together. Uh, but since then, right. a number of them are they're meeting on the Zoom meetings with the rest of us. Yep. And it's uh, it's been uh, it's been kind of fun. It really has to to to. To, to have those people uh, together with us in, our, in, in, in the same club. Absolutely, yeah. As, yeah. as nice as it is having new members join the club and, and having them you know, take part in, in the fundraising and the, uh, the community service that we do, it's equally enjoyable to have other Kiwanians join our family with their own ideas and their own projects that they've already been working on for a while. So we were able to um, not only help the Dearborn, Outer, uh, the Dearborn Heights Club to uh, maintain that, maintain everything that they had going on, all the different projects, we're able to combine our resources to um, make both our projects and theirs more more beneficial to the community, more efficient as a whole. So it's been it's been a, a great experience overall. Yeah. And we we've uh, agreed for a period of time we we're going to keep their their assets separate from our assets so that they could we could use them. Uh, you know, for their projects, like, and, and uh, that's, that, that's a helpful way for clubs to join because that way they feel like uh, they still have, uh, for at least an interim period, uh, you know, the same influence over the use of the, those funds. That's right. And yeah. to a great extent, they still are separate. It's, uh, it's, it's a, like I mentioned, the, the Dearborn Club has been going for 90 plus years now. So we've got longstanding projects. Um, a, a good example is the, is the peanut sale that we've had for over 60 years now has been a huge tradition of the club to distribute the peanut, Kiwanis peanuts on uh, the corners of various streets in Dearborn and Dearborn Heights. More about that later. That's right, that's right. <laughs> but but um, I did want to make one comment. One of the, uh, two of the members of the Dearborn Heights Club are, are Mark and Carol, help me with the last name, it's just Slit Slaters. Slaters. Yes. And, uh, they have had for a number of years a cookout in That's their right. yard, and most of us have been to that cookout before, before yes. they joined the club. But now that they've joined the club, they uh, 
they still want to have that cookout. In fact, they're willing to have a couple of cookouts. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and they have a nice yard for it. They have a nice big yard. They do. And uh, so we, we, that was our first together meeting. And it was outside, so we were able to maintain uh, distance and all that sort of thing. Yep. And it was, uh, I think we enjoyed it. We had pretty good attendance at it, too. We did. We did. Yeah. That was our first social distancing in-person meeting that we had this summer. So it was, it was a good opportunity for everybody to get out of the house, you know, for the first time and see other people. And that was, that was nice. Um, so with, like we were talking about, with the, uh, the merger of the two clubs, there's been a lot of projects on our side and on the Dearborn Heights side that they've been working on for many years too and they've been raising their own funds and they have pro programs that they help support in the community. So none of that was lost. Yeah. We, we were still able to, um, to continue you know, donating to the, the different organizations in the local community that, that have the need. Dearborn Heights had a lot of relationships uh, that they wanted to maintain as well, so we've been able to really pull everything together really well and, and keep Which going. Which brings up the next topic. In order to donate, you have to have funds raised so that you have yeah. funds to, uh, to support those projects. So we're going to talk a little bit about our plan because uh, a person-to-person -person peanut sale selling in and out of cars and stuff with hundreds of people uh, uh, it's probably not going to be approved by this, the city. In fact, we haven't asked them. <laughs> yeah, no, we as a club, we have decided to not even push the envelope in that regard. We have uh, a lot of our membership is, is older and we don't really have the, you know, the environment out there today that would be ideal for, for a fundraising program like we've had with the peanut sale. It's, it's really... It's sad that you know we've had this tradition going on for so long, and this is the first year in 60 years we haven't been able to be out there in the streets. So I'm sure a lot of local residents that know us by now and have come to expect the peanuts. I know I've been out in the street, and people have stopped and said, "Hey, I stop here every year. I love you guys. Thank you for doing this." And um, and it's it's a shame we can't be out there in person, but that doesn't mean we've stopped. So as, as a club, I mean, fundraising has been a huge buzzword this year, uh, especially with our, you know, a lot of our programs being in-person programs. Um, and a lot of that's either come to a halt or been severely impeded by, by COVID overall. And we've had to adapt and we're still adapting today. We're, we're brainstorming ideas all the time and we've got so, but, a couple but things. But the way I understand it, we're, we're, we're going to do a, a mailing or an emailing uh, program and we're going to try and contact uh, uh, all of our major contributors from the past uh, yes. past two or three years. I'd That's say. right so a big, yeah. a big portion of the of the peanut sale fundraiser for us is corporate donations so it's not only being out on the street but working with the local businesses um, to provide you know peanuts to their customers so that they can uh, share in that in that fundraising with us and then um, those corporate uh, let's say relationships that we've had for so long are, are still there the businesses are still running we're still reaching out to them and um, we have mailers going out we have letters going out explaining exactly what I said about the situation being a little bit tougher this year and we are we're pursuing other ideas as well we've got um, our Facebook page now has a, an option to donate. We've got a lot of um, not only members, but friends and families of members uh, taking part in the, the, the birthday fundraising option that you have uh, the ability to do where you partner with an organization and uh, you can say, hey, it's my birthday. Instead of just you know, hitting a like on my page, go ahead and, and send a donation to my organization of choice. So that's been an avenue there too. And our, and our website has been a big, uh, uh, a big option for, for donations as well. If you would like to go to DearbornKiwanis.org, um, we have a, a donate button there that you, we would absolutely, we are definitely in need of some fundraising uh, dollars this year. We're, we're going to have to push that every way we can, you That's know? Right. Yeah. And uh, so uh, um, we, we were talking at the meeting of uh, a possible uh, thing you have all these young children that are probably not going to school live, yeah. so you're thinking maybe maybe we could pick up a nice little educational book, 
and, uh, and get a lot of them and leave mm -hmm. them all around town with our courtesy of the Dearborn Kiwanis Club. Please donate if you get a chance. But the, it would be something that young children would give them a little education. Not a lot, but something that would take a few hours to go through and uh, it yeah, would give, be uh, something they'd have to think about a little bit. Yeah, keep them you busy, know. you know, give Hopefully all the... Hopefully fun, but sure, requiring the, a little concentration. <laughs> I'm sure it'll help all the parents that are home, working yeah. from home and distract the kids for a while. Yeah. They'll appreciate they, that. They'd probably come around and say, when are you coming out with another book? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, we've got, we've got a bunch of ideas that we're, we're working on and keep, keep an eye out for the Kiwanis name out there. And if you get the opportunity, please, I'd highly encourage you to, to donate and to, to take part. Yeah. Well, Renan, you know, uh, you've, you've, you've grown a lot in Kiwanis in the last six years. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, 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 Renan uh, actually has a uh, grandfather-in-law in Kiwanis. That's how I joined and, this uh, uh, And uh, we, were, we were extremely pleased, a number of other members were extremely pleased to be invited to your wedding. And we, we really enjoyed it. Uh, mm -hmm. it, was a, it, was a, it was a lovely wedding. And, uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, it, 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 I know you were very much involved in the planning. Mm, yes, absolutely. And, <laughs> well, and I have nice. no, no shame in it. It was, it was no, a themed wedding. It was, it, was, a, it was a lovely wedding. It was, nice. it was we, had, we were able to have it at the, uh, at the family cottage, which uh, enabled a, a beautiful venue for us out in the, the countryside. We were in Standish, Michigan, uh, you know, riverfront property. So it was, it was beautiful. It was a great time. Great weather, great people. Yeah, we had, we had good weather. It was there was there were some storms floating around, but they didn't come close to the wedding. Yeah, well, I, I, I <laughs> oh, there might have been a sprinkle here and there, but <laughs> hey, it was a sprinkle. <laughs> people still say to to this day it was one of the most fun weddings they've been to. So I, I take great pride in that. It really was. <laughs> well, I think we're just about there. Uh, we've we've uh, 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 had a a challenging year. But it's interesting when you have a challenging time, it's amazing, you, you kind of improvise. You, you do what you have to to, uh, to keep things going. And uh, so we're gonna be working hard on the fundraiser and we hope uh, that, that, uh, that our supporters will, uh, will help us out. Absolutely. And uh, most people would like to donate electronically, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, not have to fill out uh, a check and put it in an envelope. Is, isn't that the way a lot of people think yeah, nowadays. Yeah, that, that process, it used to be a lot more difficult, but especially with today's time, it's been a lot more uh, more secure, a lot more convenient for if you do want to make an online donation, it's it's a lot easier now. can now. they do that with the information on our website? They absolutely, they can. Yeah. You can go to dearbornkiwanis.org okay. and there will be a, a page on there explaining everything that uh, okay. you can do to help us. And, and they can they can use a credit card or they can use PayPal or, you know, that sort of thing. Sure. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, okay. yep. That's right. You can also go on Facebook and we have our, our Kiwanis Dearborn page on Facebook as well. And you have the ability to donate there as well. Okay. And boy, we need that support this year. <laughs> yeah, absolutely we do. Well, Renan, I want to thank you very much for coming on Kiwanis Talk. Thank you. It's and, a pleasure. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll see you next week on Zoom, if not sooner. I look forward to it. Okay. Join us on Kiwana Talk again soon. <laughs>